Gotta have that Dasani water, boys. Hello, YouTube land. My name is Wildboy5699. Welcome back to another story time of Wildboy. I actually recorded this video yesterday and tried to edit it, but I forgot to turn my microphone on. So hopefully I tested it before I started it. So hopefully the microphone is on. You're hearing me because if I go through this video again without any mic, without silence, I'm not doing this video again. So, but I wanted to talk about my trip to uh, Missouri Comic Con in Springfield, Missouri this past February. So I want to talk about from when I found out I'm, I got to go to all the way till I, till I got home. So. Um, the main reason I wanted I, I went to Missouri Comic Con is because Steve Burns, uh, Steve from Blues Clues was gonna be there, and I found out a couple of days before Christmas when they announced he was gonna be there. So I asked mom, uh, my parents, Springfield, Missouri was about three hours away, uh, and I wanted and if I wanted to see if I can go so I can meet Steve from Blues Clues. And my mom said, well, let's talk to dad about it and see. My dad's like, well, I got it. He heaved and talked about it. He said, I'll think about it. Give me a few days and we'll figure it out. And then Christmas rolled around a few days later, and I got not sick. I don't think it was COVID or just some bug or cough and everything, but I stayed in bed for pretty much most of Christmas this past year. That's why I didn't make any videos or anything. And uh, I lay down for a bit of it, and my uh, dad uh, woke me up, and he said, hey, I got to talk to you in the living room. So we talked in the living room. He said, if you want to go meet Steve and buy tickets for the weekend, I'll take you up there. I'm like, all right, cool. So I had the cash on me, so I asked my brother if I give him the cash, and he can transfer the money to my bank account. He said, yeah, that was fine. So I was able to buy the ticket the same day I found out I was going. And I also found out they had a really good lineup too. Other than Steve Burns, Great of Wild, uh, Billy West, Sean Aston and everything. So, and it was on uh, February 9th and 10th. Or I'm sorry, February 10th and 11th Super Bowl weekend. Actually, we went up there the day before. Because if we were going to go on the day, uh, my dad would have to find a couple of hours just to ha uh, have time to kill. So we went up the night before. It was just me and my dad when we went. And uh, we went to, I went to check in a day, uh, day early. Or scare my ticket today because I know the line for that was absolutely b b huge. So I would probably be sad today if I didn't do that. And then I got a flyer thing and I asked if I could take one of those. And he's like, yeah, go ahead. So, and I did. And then that Friday night we checked in the hotel. We went to Bucky's and everything. They just opened up a Bucky's about 10 minutes from the Expo Center. So it was really, really fucking huge. And then went to, got some dinner. Then I went to bed for the night. I think I slept for about three or four hours that, that till Saturday morning. I got up about 6 o'clock. Uh, went right across the street to McDonald's to get some breakfast, and then I went to bed. I went back to bed for another hour, an hour and a half. Got up, took a shower, got to the Exmo Center about 9, 9 15. Still had about uh, 30, 45 minutes before. You could go into the lobby of the Expo Center, but you couldn't go onto the showroom floor where they had the booths and merch and stuff like that. And so it was It was actually warm out. It was actually uh, not nice that weekend. I think the day, on that Monday it started to snow a little bit. But uh, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. But anyway, um, so Joey Mill, Mill, excuse me, Joey Mills, who runs the, these VXF thing, very, very nice guy, and the, he runs the Pop Goes to Culture con, Pop Goes to Culture pon, podcast. I forgot what I was going to say. If you want to see the whole experience of my Missouri Comic Con, I'll put it in bubble here in the link in the description. You'll find it somewhere on this video. Uh, but anyway, Joey and the guys from over Pop Goes to Culture, Pop Goes to Culture podcast, I can't say the name, Pop Goes to Culture podcast. Super very nice guys. I'm friends with Joey on Facebook. A couple of all the other guys who run that who run the those VHX uh, uh, conventions are very very awesome guys. Like he they run the one they run the big Comic Con in Little Rock. They run the one up in Northwest Arkansas. They're gonna do the one in Tulsa in a couple of months. Uh, they are popping up everywhere now. Now so chances are if you go to a Comic Con somewhere, chances are you're gonna see Joey Mills. So very very awesome. Very nice guy. And so, uh, they did the countdown like they did, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then the doors opened. I went to the furthest end of the door to where Steve's booth was, went inside, and I saw Steve's booth, so I quickly rushed her, and a couple of people beat me to it. So I was probably about the 6th, 7th person in line, and Steve didn't come out until about uh, 10, 20, 20, 10, 30. And I'm just talking with the other people saying they're excited. He was, his neighbor, booth neighbor was Sean Aston, And um, by 10, 30, Sean Aston's line was all the way out the door. And, I don't know, Sean aston has been doing movies from decades. He was in The Goonies, Stranger Things, um, other stuff I can't think about. Um, uh, he was in that movie with Adam Sandler, Click, and everything. And so Steve, Steve finally came out, and I was able to get an autograph from Steve. That was it. When he came out, I tried my best not to cry. I got teary-eyed, so I was so so excited for that. So I was able to get an uh, autograph from Steve and tell him thank you for a great childhood to be my friend. And he's like, man, I never get tired of hearing that. I always love hearing that. And so I just thanked him for that. It was very, very cool. And then later that afternoon, I took a photo op with Steve, which I probably will never do one of these photo ops again because it was just a, 
a circus, you know, you, it's 75 bucks for, for Steve, let alone so it was like 90 bucks for after taxes and everything. And so they scan your ticket, go to line, uh, take the picture, and you're done, and you get your picture, and you're done. So it's like a 10-minute process, so not even a 10-minute pro process, but... Very cool to have that professional photo. Very cool to meet Steve. Very, very nice guy. Glad I got to meet my childhood hero. So after that, I, my mom just got off of work right after I met Steve. So I talked to her about talked to her about it, sent her autograph, and told her the picture would be coming later this afternoon. And so I walked around, and I saw, you can't see, but Great Alal, another voiceover art, uh, voice actress who has been in thousands of shows that I watched growing up. Growing up, Super sweet lady. So I said, all right, I'm going to go to Great Alal's booth. And so I did and it was like $75 for an autograph or $75 for a selfie. I said, oh my gosh, she's going to be 150 bucks for both. So I asked, I said, how much for an autograph and a selfie come? And I got, the person's like, oh, it's 100 bucks. I said, all right, give me a $100 bill because I'll do another tip. I'll do it later in the future. I'll do a, a tips and uh, tip on how to uh, prepare for Comic Cons and everything like that because I always carry at least $300 worth of cash with me. Um, but anyway, I met Great Alal. I kind of deb he I kind of debated uh, what autograph to get because I'm like, oh my gosh, she's in a lot of stuff I wanted to watch. So my one I wanted to get was Foster's Home for Engineering Friends, Frankie. But there was not a uh, uh, Foster's Home for Engineering Friends picture that I really liked. And then I came across they had a high high puppy on the Yumi po uh, picture, <coughs> and I thought as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, I am going to get that because I watched the shit out of the show a lot. And I currently bought a couple of DVDs and watched the show and everything. Uh, but, uh, like that, I watched that show. I watched Totally Spies growing up and everything. I'm surprised people thought, I'm surprised I'm not getting anything. But anyway, um, uh, but yeah, I met Great Alal. She was hugging everybody. Very sweet person. She hugged me and then she started talking to me as you know me. She told me that uh, that she had a, a reunion in Pasadena, California with Ami's voice actor, Janice Kawaii, and Kaz's voice actor, Kenan Young, who's going to be at Galaxy Con in Oklahoma City. Uh, this uh, in a couple of months, so we talked. I said, you know, that was really cool, very nice, and so I got it, actually took a picture with Great Alal herself. Very, very sweet person. She gave me a, gave everybody a hug. She gave me a thing for uh, her Spotify. Very, very talented artist too. And so I walked around some more, and then I bought that seventy-five dollar Miku uh, wall scroll. I asked how much it was, and the guy said it's like seventy-five dollars because it was out of print and everything. I said, okay, give me some time and I'll think about it. So I kind of heaved and talked about it for about fifteen minutes, talked myself into it again. My dad actually taught myself getting into it. He's like, you who worked hard for your money. If there's something you want to get that's expensive, by God, go get it because you because like I said, hey, once you're gonna if you don't want it but don't get it, you're gonna regret it. So I said, all right, fuck it. Went back to there and I said, yeah, I'll go ahead and take the uh, the Miku wall scroll. So it cost me eighty something dollars after credit card and everything like that so and then i walked around on evening for a little bit and then i went to i forgot my boss gave me about 60 dollars to get an autograph uh from boo boo stewart who my sister knows from the descendants and my and so my boss uh knows her from twilight knows him from twilight so i told her so you want me to get your twilight uh picture of him and she's like yeah give me something twilight with it so all right i did so i his Q&A was the first one of the day on the main stage. And after that was Billy West. But he got back a couple, uh, about 15 minutes before Billy West's uh, uh, panel came. And so I was the, that was the second person in line. And I guess the guy in front of me, uh, his card wasn't working. So I had, luckily I had cash on me. And so I met Bo Boo Boo Stewart and got an autograph from my boss. Boo Boo Stewart was actually a very, very friendly guy. I was wearing my Blue's Clue shirt. And uh, he asked me if I met Steve yet. I said, actually, I did. And I took everything and me not the credit. So we talked about that. And he asked me what other people I met. I said, I met Great Alal who plays, you know, Father's Son for Nature of Friends. He's like, oh, my gosh, he plays that. I'm like, yeah. And uh, I think Boo Boo Stewart's a couple years older than me. I know he's a couple years older than me, but, like, very, very nice guy. Soft-spoken, very calm, very nice guy. And so I get an autograph. I'm sorry, I'm wheezing a little bit. I can tell I'm wheezing. Sorry about that. But anyway, I'm not going to end this video besides the intro and outro. But anyway. Met Boo Boo Stewart, very nice guy. We talked for about five minutes in his line and then gave me a, a, a picture, a autograph for my boss. A very, very nice guy. I sent it to my boss and then she was so excited to get it. So when I got, when I showed her Monday, that Monday, she was just over the moon and she said she went, she's going to go buy a nice um, picture from uh, Roto Frank from Hobby Lobby. And so, or Michaels or whatever. And so I said, all right, I'm going to go across the street to the main stage because they had the expo center for the showroom floor and across the street at the convention center was the main stage and Q&As and stuff. So I walked over there, attended Billy West q and I thought about meeting Billy West again, signed my future on box set, but I already met Billy West last year at the Northwest Arkansas Comic Con. I said, now nah, I want to meet somebody different. So went to his Q&A and um, 
asked him about uh, how, what was the audition process for Futurama and asked him where you were expecting to play, you know, Fry, Zoidberg, uh, Farmsworth, and stuff like that. And, you know, he gave me a good answer and everything. And um, <coughs> after that, uh, Kate, uh, I wanted to go to another anime voice actress, Caitlin Glass, was in the next room over on panel on panel room one, which before her Q and A was Sam Jones who plays who older Gen X knows her from knows her from Flash Gordon and newer generations know him as uh, from Ted, <coughs> but and so I felt bad for Sam Jones because his Q and A had like probably about nine, ten, eleven people in there. I said okay, Caitlin Glass might not have many, but surprisingly, even though it was on the not on the main stage, Caitlin Glass's Q and A was actually a uh, full house. And the guy who was hosting the Q&A, very, very nice guy. We talked for a few minutes, you know, before they had to ask me how it was a good time. And, you know, we talked about Joey, very nice guy. And uh, finally, Caitlin Glass came out. And uh, they kind of did different. You know, they, he was nice enough to ask us, to ask the audience, different questions. Like, that was the first one. And he asked me what was my favorite uh, dessert. And I kind of heaped off for about 36. And I finally said, uh, vanilla cake and vanilla ice. And everyone was like, yeah, they can get down with that. So I asked Caitlin Glass. At the time, I only knowed Caitlin Glass from two roles. Uh, I knew her from Burst Angel because I was I just got down to watching that before I went, and then I was started watching her in my hero academia. So of course I asked her a Burst Angel related question, and uh, so I asked her. You know, I said you know the first role I've been watching was actually my favorite one is Burst Angel. I can't pronounce the lady's name. She finally realized. So I'm like, oh yeah. So she's like, yeah, I remember doing that. So I told her that uh, Jamie Marchi uh, and Monica Riel, who were on the show with her, are one of my top five favorite anime voice actors. And so I I told her I never met either of them. Uh, since you worked with them on a couple of shows, have you worked with them in the booth? Have you worked with them behind the scenes or any conventions? And what were they like? And uh, she ex and Caitlin explained that she never worked with them in the booth because she always did it so uh, by herself. But she said from her experiences from meeting and working with them, they had been very, very friendly people. And the guy who was hosting the Q&A also said that he has met both Jamie and Monica and has been met and never very friendly. Because well, I've met a lot of people who was who had um, a vendor booths at the convention who saw Maria's tattoo and... They have said they have met Jamie before. Jamie who met Jamie before in the past, and everybody who I've met that has met her. They they said they she was very very nice. Because like, I got a pop up. I was like, was she nice? Because I know Twitter likes to give her shit on Facebook, which I don't know why. But I've seen many people on Reddit who said who have met Jamie. I met people at conventions who have also met Jamie, and they've said that she's a really friendly person. So hopefully one day if she comes to a Comic Con, you know, whether it be Northwest Arkansas, Oklahoma Comic Con, or even Fort Smith Comic Con, I'm hoping that. I'll be able to meet her one day to show her my race tattoo because I only because um I popped up to Caitlin and said yeah I'm still waiting to meet Jamie so I can show her my race tattoo and everybody laughed and she asked to get a closer look at the tattoo she never was on high school DXC I never believe uh, but she saw the tattoo and she said that's probably the best race tattoo uh, she's ever seen so hopefully one day when I do meet Jamie I get to share my tattoo and she'll love it so thumbs up for that and then after that Q and A another more questions a lot of questions for my hero academia related orange related stuff like that. And so then we went to her, and then after that, I walked around some more, did some shopping, went to my photo walk with Steve, and then about 4.30, I said, all right, I'm calling it. I'm going back to the hotel for the rest of the night. Um, so we went to the, my, my dad picked me up for the hotel, and then we went to Chili's, and then uh, Chili's was right up the road. And uh, so we went to bed, I went to bed, and then got up again, uh, checked out of the hotel, and went to the convention doors opened at 11 o'clock. Uh, I did not go to Steve Birch or Great Alive's Q and A because that was they were the last two of the day and I didn't want to wait in on that wrong. But I did get an autograph uh, from Scott, uh, actor from voice actor Scott Irons, who has voiced well, who voiced both Shaggy and Scooby Doo and Scooby Doo: The Witch's Ghost, which is personal, which I've said before. Scooby Doo: The Witch's Ghost is my favorite Scooby Doo movie, and I told him that my favorite line uh, as Shaggy from that movie is right before the Hedge Girls came on. He says the line, "It's the witches." And the cracks me up. He cracked. He chuckled. He said that's probably one of his favorite lines. And he repeated the line. And he was a very, very friendly guy too. His booth was actually really cool. He had like clothes, shoes, CDs, and stuff like that. All the other very nice stuff. He goes all after that. And then about twelve thirty yesterday, about twelve o'clock, I said, "All right, I'm done. It's the day of the Super Bowl. It's gonna be a madhouse when we get out of here. Let's go home because my sister and her husband invited us to come to a Super Bowl party when the Super Bowl started." I said, "All right, let's go home. Get something to eat on the way home, and then." Go to the Super Bowl party this that evening. So we got back, uh, rest for about 45 minutes, and then went to the Super Bowl party. I literally just got back like 45 minutes ago. But it was absolutely a fantastic time. I've only been to a couple of Comic Cons, but so far, Missouri Comic Con has been my favorite so far. I'm looking forward to Oklahoma Comic Con, and I'm hopefully they have a good lineup for Fort Smith Comic Con. They haven't announced anybody yet, even though the Comic Con's in July, but I figure around uh, when they release the guests, they're going to release them all at the same time. Uh, so hopefully they'll have a good lineup and everything. So we'll just have to see. 
I would plan on doing a couple more videos in the near time when Force Man Comic Con gets closer, or Oklahoma Comic Con, maybe Galaxy Con. I'm still even hobbing about Galaxy Con in Oklahoma City because the only people I know are going to be there is Steve uh, Burns, Jonathan Patton, Josh Del Cruz. Uh, we're going to meet Steve Burns, so it would be nice to meet the other two Blue Clues hosts. I'm sure they're nice people. But anyway, we'll just have to wait till the time gets closer. I wanted to make this video early in the morning because I got a, we got a leak in the house and it's raining and getting bad. So I wanted to do that before they make all the loud noise. But until that, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to thumbs up, comment down below. Check out my social media down in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I'll see you all in the future video. Take it easy.